All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. It's me, Addy, again, and I hope you guys are doing all right. So to say that this past week has been absolutely wild would be an understatement. And if you're a fellow FF7 fan like I am, it's my favorite game ever made, then you probably know why I'm saying this. <laughs> you know, it's almost like we are eating a Michelin star course here as Final Fantasy VII fans on a golden platter. We have been eating well, my friends. And that's because these past couple of days, there has been a boatload of information surrounding Final Fantasy VII Rebirth that has been coming out. Where do I even begin? <laughs> you know, when this information first started coming out, in the form of a lot of content creators getting the opportunity to play a crazy demo of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, I thought about sitting down and reacting to a lot of it, but the thing is, I was kind of not wanting to do that at the same time because I was kind of holding on a hope that maybe that demo will be coming out soon for the rest of the public as well, which doesn't seem to be the case anymore. If this demo does ever come out, I think it'll come out maybe closer to the release of the game in February. So you know what? Between now and then, there's absolutely no way I'm not going to check out this footage, and there's definitely no way I'm not going to spoil myself, you know? So I figured today we'd sit down and check out this information together and I gotta admit before we begin that I have seen some snippets of what's in this demo so it largely encompasses the portion of the original game where Cloud and Sephiroth are going up Mount Nebel as well as the part where you're kind of exploring the open world terrain surrounding Junin as well as the town underneath it and there's a lot of crazy story stuff that happens and let me tell you I saw some of the narrative stuff there in this rebirth demo and I was in love especially the Sephiroth cloud part where they're going up Mount Nebel, it just looks like this game is the game I've always been dreaming of, you know, ever since before even Remake came out, while we were anticipating what this Remake continuity and project would look like by Square Enix. It just is crazy how they've been hitting all the right notes continuously, and when I tell you guys that this looks beautiful and could potentially be not just the best Final Fantasy VII game that we have gotten, but also one of the greatest games ever made, I am not exaggerating, and I guess you guys will see why when we check out this demo footage together, but that's not all that we have lined up today. We've also got some TGS footage to check out from last night, the Tokyo Game Show event, where Square Enix did a crazy live stream of even more information on top of what we already have here with the demo stuff. I mean, I did tell you guys that we're eating well, right? <laughs> I did want to check out the TGS stuff last night on stream with you guys, but I did have some family and friend stuff going on. So what better day than today to sit down and check out all of it. We're going to see all the information that's come out on this game this past week, including the TGS stuff from last night by Square themselves in this one video, and it's going to be a fun one. So strap on in, grab your snacks, you're in for a long ride. But don't worry, I got you guys. I'm going to segment this video up into chapters so it's easier for you guys to watch. And we're going to try and stay calm, especially me. You guys are probably chilling, right? But man, I'm trying really hard to stay calm right now because, <laughs> oh my goodness, number one, I have no idea what to expect with the TGS stuff. I've heard from some friends that this TGS trailer that we're going to check out after the demo stuff here is absolutely wild and that tears have been shed. So I don't know what's going to happen with us here today. I don't know if tears are going to be shed, if overreactions are going to be shed, but just know that whatever happens, we're going to embrace our dreams and protect our honor and the wise words of a dude we all know and love. Anyways, guys, without further ado, let's get right into this and check out the Rebirth demo, 45 minutes of it. The specific version of the demo coverage that we're going to be checking out today on YouTube was done by Game Riot, by the way. So massive shout out there. We're going to be checking out this dude's video. It's 45 minutes of pure gameplay footage, and I can't wait to check this out. Let's get this. Man, before we begin, I just want to say this. <laughs> this wallpaper looks so good. Zach's back. We have no idea what's going to happen in Rebirth. Whatever, I'm going to shut up now. Well, so much to be excited for. Down to London and play Final Fantasy Rebirth early. And here is all the gameplay from the demo. Very excited for this video. Um, a big thanks to Square Enix for the invites. I'm guessing, this is a complete guess, speculation, this demo will release at some point. Maybe I fucking hope so. I <laughs> so I will do a pinned comment below. It better. If there's an update on the demo. Freaking um, better. Yes. Let's check it out. We're going to uh, check out the graphics mode for today. Oh, nice. You got a performance uh, mode. I hope it's, it's good. Unlike Final Fantasy 16, where it was kind of choppy. Just under a hundred hours of content 
with, with within this game, by the way, which is just... 100 hours on two discs. Holy fuck. I mean, we already knew this, but... So I can't fathom that. I love this cutscene, by the way. I saw a bit of this. using Mako to power our homes, springs like this will disappear, right? What are you talking about? Who told you that? My dad. And the mayor, if you must know. <laughs> the voice acting is so good in this, especially Clouds. huge. Mako will never run out, right? The way Cody Christian played him to behave in a certain way for a certain reason I won't spoil is fantastic. And look at the size of it. Astounding. Sephiroth sounds great too. This is a scene of energy to condense into something like this. It must have taken an eternity. I've always wondered, how does Materia let you cast spells exactly? How did you ever get to be a soldier? I love the way he delivers that line. How does Materia let you cast spells exactly? To put it simply, something the about that. The is sealed within each orb. That knowledge not only connects us to the planet, it allows us to tap into her power. That's how we can use magic. Or so they say. Really? Magic sure is weird. <laughs> <laughs> this is so sick. I know someone who'd be livid to hear you call it weird. Or magic, for that matter. I can just imagine what he'd say. It's an affront to science. Who? Hojo, from Research and Development. His predecessor was a great man. But him... He is anything but. <laughs> we should press on. That's an interesting looking so yeah, Shinra grunt the there with them, by the way. All right, I gotta pause it real quick. Man, I know I said this before too in this video. I think I did, but for years, I have been dreaming of seeing this scene being done in the remake, you know, because I've always wanted to know how Cloud in a fully voiced 3D model would behave in this scene in this flashback to, to the Nibelheim sequence when the party is in calm in the present day. For a very specific reason that I won't spoil, right? Where I'm not going to get too... I'm going to try not to get too spoilery in this reaction video. But, man, just seeing the way that Cody Christian delivered the lines for Cloud, given that spoilery, spoilery reason, and um, the mannerisms and stuff, oh, it's so good. And even Sephiroth, his lines are pretty awesome here, too. Uh, I know not a lot of people were on board with Sephiroth's new voice actor in Remake, but I think he's definitely getting better. And in the lines I've heard so far of his in Rebirth... They're pretty damn solid, right? He has like a lot of enigma surrounding him. He's like this really mysterious figure. And that's always kind of the vibe I've gotten from him, especially when he was like alive and on the side of the living, you know? So it's great to see all of that. Oh, you are with Sephiroth. Let's continue. A, a very young, naive cloud. He, he even comes across completely different, mm -hmm. which is kind of crazy. Uh, there's As a bigger should. focus on the open world in this game. I had like one negative when I played it, and it was this bit, just a bit dark. So some parts of the game were a little bit dark. I don't know if it's the HD, HDR, sorry, or just the brightness in the demo, I don't know. But I'm sure that can be corrected in the full game. Oh, uh, also, shit, I didn't see a, this. I believe a three month exclusive. The new menu the screen? Website. It may launch on PC at some point next year. You can now That's cool. fully play with Red 13 in the game. And it's also a brand new synergy. Holy synergy, shit. Actually. So and you can play Sephiroth here in the flashback sequence. Incredible powers. There's a skill tree. Um, what else is that? My God, <laughs> man. The game will end at the Forgotten Capital. That we know I about. I played Final Fantasy VII, which I know is just an absolute travesty. You got to play, play it, remake, my dude. Um, but I never played the original, which I know is just gotta play absolutely it. mad. Um, yeah, tons and tons of content. There's going to be more summons as well. Uh, it's just very exciting. I'm going to let you guys watch the demo. I was definitely um, a bit rusty. What's first. this new first strike thing? It um, looks so I'd interesting. The, the last battle. I know it's a materia, I but it's my, working a bit differently here, my, seemingly. My again, of Final Fantasy VII, I actually started to play the game semi-correctly. Um, even then, um, I'm sure you guys will nitpick it. So it's not perfect gameplay, but it's a chance to see the game in action. And hopefully this demo will come out at some point. Um, even I know, today, man. Or the next week or so. Hopefully. Next week, I hope. Yeah, Bro, please. Purely speculation. Enjoy Give us a release play. date, Square. So good. Ugh. Give us a release date for this demo, damn it. Where is it at? But damn, man, this particular part of the game looks spectacular so far. 
right? I think this is one of the scenes or one of the segments from the original story that we've all been yearning to see, right? The, the Nibelheim flashback. Is Sephiroth going to be playable? He totally is. And like, he's like really fully fleshed out here in a way that I didn't anticipate, you know? I thought before Rebirth came out that it would be like Sephiroth would be a tutorial character, right? The game would start in the flashback and then Sephiroth would be your tutorial and you'd feel really powerful as this character who is easy to use to learn the game easily while fighting the giant dragon when the truck breaks down. But uh, no, he's like this proper party member for this sequence that you're like climbing up Mount Nebel with, just like the original as well. And look at those jaggedy sharp rocks and everything we know and love from Nibelheim or Mount Nebel's geography. It's so great. And yeah, the new menu screen looks amazing as well. And in Remake, it, it was a pause screen with renders of the characters. But now it's like you're still in gameplay, which is kind of neat. <laughs> Yellow wedges. That's like, uh, what does this remind me of? I think it's like Resident Evil 4, right? So I gotta play separate ways, by the way. <laughs> Guys, make sure to remind me. <laughs> but this is awesome. What the flip, man? Cloud can like, freaking Spider-Man parkour around in this game and climb ledges and stuff. Oh, man. Oh, I remember these guys from the original. They're around Mount Nebel. So, real quick while we're watching this gameplay footage, I'll, I'll share a couple of things that I've, I'm kind of familiar with from the details surrounding this game that weren't really covered in the trailers. That's where I've been, you know, slowly doling out. So I know about things like we're not going to be able to play Vincent and Sid in this, which to a lot of people may seem like a bummer, but in a weird way, I kind of like that because I've, and I've always kind of anticipated that because it will be like crazy hella overscoping if you were able to play them both, like every single character, including potentially Zack, which they've also confirmed he's going to have his own separate episode as well as Sephiroth here. There's just too many characters. And then the new ones too, like Red and um, Kate Sith and technically Yuffie too with her new synergy stuff with the main members from Remake. If you put Vincent and Sid on top of those, that would be too much scoping, right? And I don't think it's it would be reasonable uh, for them to put all that stuff in the game and also try to go all out with the other things. It would just be seemingly impossible, which it does seem like given we're not going to be able to play as them so i completely understand they were avoiding the overscoping and in a way it's great because it allows us to be excited for something else with part three now you know we're going to be able to look forward to playing as two other characters now especially vincent for me in part three but we have seen that we run into vincent in this and we're probably going to run into sid too because i think uh, hamaguchi mentioned that we're going to actually be able to ride around in the tiny bronco at some point so we're going to meet them, but I think it'll be like a Red 13 situation where they won't be playable by us, but the computer will control them. So I'm really looking forward to that. It's a nice compromise. I think Remake handled that beautifully with Red 13. And I love the transparency in that game. It's like, hey, you know what? Red 13's in this game, but he's not going to be playable. And, you know, we'll stick to our guns. We'll make him not playable just, to, you know, because we wanted to also do all this other crazy stuff with the game. Um, and that, that's something I can appreciate, but this is awesome, man. <laughs> not Nebel looks good. So far, the music, I'm not sure if I'm 100% in love with it because it's just the same traversal music from 7 Remake. Uh, you know, when I was kind of anticipating this scene, I was hoping for there to be like a unique track that would maybe play in Rebirth or like when you're climbing Mount Nebel with Sephiroth, but that's just a really minor pet peeve. It's still amazing overall. I mean... Look at all this new gameplay stuff. It's great. I can't wait to see the synergy stuff. I know we saw a small snippet of Sephiroth and Cloud fighting the Materia Keeper, right? And he did this crazy synergy attack, and I can't wait to see that in this demo footage. I also gotta say, I appreciate this dude for uploading 45 minutes of whole ass demo footage with minimal commentary. So we can really be immersed. You're done. Yeah, so largely the same as Remake, the stagger system's back. The combat was so good in Remake, man. I love 16 as much as the next guy, but that one was like heavily action focused. Six, I mean, 7, sorry, has a lot of action elements, but it largely retains a lot of the strategic RPG stuff as well, which I can definitely appreciate. You know, like some of the DNA of the original game. And I think this is the direction I would want to see them moving forward with for combat in the Final Fantasy 7 or Final Fantasy franchise in general. Can't wait to see the rest of this stuff with you guys, man. 
So yeah, this is the music they play when you're going with Barrett and Tifa in 7 Remake to blow up Sector 5. Can't remember if they play it anywhere else. I think they do when you're... No, th no, I think that's the only place, maybe. No, when you're going past the wind turbines and stuff. Kind of an odd choice for the Mount Nebel section, but meh. Whatever. I always like felt like this scene should have had a little bit more... Um, a little more, more intensity and kind of like have something more sinister to it with the music to like just amplify the gravity of the fact that you're with Sephiroth here, right? Quite quite literally the most powerful man alive and most terrifying. But this is great. Retaining largely the same elements as Remake that we all know and love but with all these new iterations. And I love the new menu screen as well. It's an interesting background behind them. Wonder what that's meant to be. And it looks like we're fighting the summons again to unlock them in that VR simulator kind of level. Seen a bit of that too. I <laughs> can't wait for Alexander and all the other crazy mother flippers like Odin and oh man, this game's gonna be wild. It's gonna be so good, you guys. <laughs> I'm so glad I'm alive. Just Remind me to be alive for the next five months and not tragically die somehow. All right, I need to be alive to experience this game. <laughs> Elevator access restricted due to Mako gas concentrations. Air purification unit must be employed to clear excess Mako gas. So cool. I can't stress this enough, but it's so cool seeing this quirky, goofy version of Cloud here. Or again, reasons I won't get into as to why he's like that. And for now, for those of you who haven't played the original 7, just assume it's because Cloud was younger and more naive. And this is before he went through a bunch of shit because of Sephiroth. A little interesting bit of like platforming here or puzzle solving. Kind of cool. Like he's like pushing around this giant thing. I'm going to make mental notes and remember this for the full release. Totally not seething with jealousy, by the way, that I didn't get I didn't get to play this demo. <laughs> somewhere out there in the vast multiverse exists a version of me that got to play this somewhere. I need my hands on this demo, man. But you guys let me know in the comments below for anyone who might end up watching this reaction video. From everything we're seeing, right, what are you most excited for? For me, it's definitely the, the story stuff, the cutscenes. The story portion of Final Fantasy VII has always been what I've held close to my heart for, for like, since ever, you know? Since forever. Stuff with the characters and their dynamics and the adventure they go on. But yeah, when it comes to the gameplay, I'm really looking forward to the synergy things, and I can't wait to see more of that stuff in this demo. Because I think uh, intermission with Yuffie and Sonin sets such a good, you know, sort of baseline for what to expand upon with a whole ass sequel, which is Rebirth here. Um, when it came to the synergy stuff. I can't wait to see the Materia Keeper fight. Up ahead. Looks like a way out. All right, here we go. Speak of the freaking devil. Wait. I feel like we're playing the game right now, you know? Just chilling like in a usual live stream and I have the controller and we're playing. What? This is awesome. Get back. <laughs> oh man, Sephiroth's a badass. This way. I want to see more of that grunt. I won't say why. I want to see what he does for very important reasons. <laughs> Wish I had it. His lines are perfect if you know, like, be my guest. what he's supposed to be doing. It, the lines are so good. Try to keep your guard up. Oh man, those, those dodges look a little different too. For some reason, I feel like I, we could do those in remake as well with a certain materia. Is this like a quick dodge materia that we have? 
Yeah. I'm definitely playing remake again before this comes out. Oh my god. <laughs> Let's go inject the battle theme into my veins. Those who fight. That's what it's called, right? There's those who fight, then those who fight further. Oh, pressured. And I remember Cloud had this one, like, pierce attack that was so good at building up, like, stagger in this game. Focus to us. That's what it is. Almost feel like grabbing the controller and doing that. <laughs> Holy shit, that. And it's called a Materia Guardian. That's so interesting. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -ba. Right. <laughs> this is so sick. <laughs> Mika strat, yeah. Definitely don't want to get caught by that. Right, show me Sephiroth. Look at this fabulous man do. With his 10 bottles of L'Oreal shampoo. Limit breaks. Oh, true. So Cloud's got Cross Slash again, like in the... Uh, in the remake, there it is. Can't wait to see all his new weapons and new limit breaks that he's gonna get from like further down the line in the OG in this game. Oh, there's the synergy stuff. It's gotta be, right? Or or no, this is a cutscene. True, true, true. There are cutscenes in the middle of the fights. Knock it down. Good thing I don't just fight with a sword. <laughs> Their banter is so good. It's so good. It's all you. Stand back. Cloud being the Cloud the puppy and Sephiroth being this extremely seasoned dude. It's legs. Now. He was just really confident. And it's like another Sunday afternoon for him. Here we go. Playing as Sephiroth. Now this Got is the it. shit I want to see. Move in. My God, what what are these abilities? Holy shit, Hell's Gate! Who are you? I like this a lot. I just kind of wish, man. My only tiny wish that we're not getting here, which is okay, is I'm more than happy with this. Is um, being able to see Sephiroth one or two shotting things that would have been so so fucking cool. But this is great, too, because this way, with Sephiroth being another normal character in terms of damage, uh, we get more time to play as him, obviously, you know? So both would have worked. Practically panting. I'm excited. <laughs> Such a puppy. <laughs> he actually calls him a puppy. Oh, my God. What the fuck? <laughs> that's so good. Oh, that's so good because, oh, man, I can't say it. That's so good. Oh, fuck. All I'm gonna say, for those of you who know who you know, uh, Sephiroth was friends with Angel. Like the there was a character Angel used to call a puppy. That's all I'm gonna say. Sephiroth, Sephiroth was probably aware of that. Therefore, this. <laughs> Whoa, that was insane. Don't get distracted. Strike. Oh my God. <laughs> this is so sick, man. Telluric Fury. Zonchin. And Sephiroth looks insanely cool. This is a game of the year. A game of the fucking decade, man. <laughs> Warp. That's crazy. So, like... Circle with Sephiroth isn't just like a normal dodge. He does like a straight up fucking teleport move or something. It says warp, right? I love this is like this is the remake combat I know and love. This is what I know and love. Barrett Cloud fighting the Scorpion, one of them being down, one of them being pulled up, and the other one has to like take over as the player and like kick ass. Oh, it's so sick. It's back, baby. Remake's back. Nice. Take it from here. Did you guys hear a little bit of Sephiroth's late motif there? Oh, that was so good. A little bit of his theme. Oh, this is wonderful. <laughs> I want to fucking like. Nice work. 
I want to fucking cry. <laughs> Man, this actually gets me emotional. Like, this is one of the scenes I would dream of growing up before they even announced a, like, a, a remake. What a scene, a fully realized 3D next-gen scene would look like with the Nibelheim flashback. What Cloud would act like, what he would sound like. Man, okay, so interesting. There was Zap it at the Mount Nebel demo, and it's segmented, so now you can see the other stuff, too. Check it out. Oh, let's go! So this is the other part where they're going to Junon. I didn't see this, this little demo. part. The clones. I love how much more involved they are with the story. I love you too. I love everyone here. <laughs> you grab one of the clones. Oh my god. Well, that guy's not going to the reunion party. That city they're headed to. Is that Junon. Shinra territory. Come on. They want to get on a ship. You see the high wind up there? It's all, I mean, it was in the original too, but I love how like, uh, I love how easy it is to spot. It's so stand out here. The open wilds of Junon, Cloud and Company's travels have taken them all the way to Junon's doorstep. Explore the region around this heavily guarded. Oh my God. There's a black chocobo, it's so cute. Call your chocobo. Oh my god, and they're different colored chocobos, just like in the OG. I believe there's no breeding in this, which is fine, but it's so cool how they kept all the different chocobos so they can do different things. Story about a great condor said to roost on the, the music. The music. Though there's no longer any way to reach the isle, or at least none that I'm aware of. They just finally reclaimed what Shinra <laughs> The chocobo music, I just realized. <laughs> Mumba the chocobo. Agree. Oh, it sounds so good. Nobuo's uh, Chocobo theme. Let's focus on where we can go. Oh my god. Oh my god, this game. Oh my god, dude. Yes, I, got him. I can't believe what I'm looking at. Don't overdo it. And now we can play as Red 13, and I've seen him riding the Chocobo too. It's so adorable. And here he is on my mic. He's riding the chocobo on my microphone. As in spot him there. My boy. I'm just gonna say it. I think Red 13 has... Everyone killed it with the voice acting, right? But I think Red 13 has the best voice out of anyone ever in this game. He sounds exactly what I imagine he would sound like for years, man. Before he even got cast. Look at him climbing the... Riding a chocobo? Wait, is that a baby chocobo? What the hell is going? I'm gonna die from cuteness. I'm gonna. I can't believe what I'm seeing. Cannot believe what I'm seeing. What is this? Oh, he can put up like. Is that fast travel? Oh, that's adorable. You can pet the baby chocobo. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> Loveless. <laughs> I love all the Loveless posters. Freaking Genesis, man. Can't escape the references. I mean, sure, Loveless was a little poster in the original, too. Whatever, but... You can't... You can't disagree with me that anytime they put a Loveless reference, they're not at least thinking of our... Of our boy, G... Petting him again, as you should, my friend. Pet him like 50 times for like 10 minutes, I don't care. That could be 10 minutes of the demo. Can't get enough of that. This world looks so good. <laughs> it's beautiful because it's like a hybrid between an open world game and an open zone game, right? Because it is, I, I would imagine, open zoned. Because you do have to oh, go through like branch. doors and stuff. And passages with loading screens to get to other parts of the the world, but the zones themselves are massive, is what I'm getting. So it might as well also be called an open world game. Love to see it. 
Okay, here's a, a shop. Tax shop. Golden. Oh, so you got these golden plumes. From the Chocobo sure stuff. And you can... Starts pulling his weight soon. Oh my god, a Chocobo stable? What? They're multiple around the world? I love it. I love it. You don't just get Chocobo Billy's Ranch in this. There's more shit. Choco Boutique. I love that. Sorry, you can't see it, but at the top left. That's what they're calling it. More exploration. I'm sorry, I'm not saying much because I just want to really listen to this new music here. If you guys watch my streams, you'll know that I'm enamored with video game music and like I'm always commenting on it and appreciating that stuff. Um, so I'm just taking this all in. Final Fantasy VII has my favorite soundtrack of all time. So anytime we hear some, and Remake knocked it out of the park, by the way, it was fucking beautiful how they handle the original tracks and added new ones then on top of that. And so it's always such a joy. What the hell is that? During this time of year, Tonadus migrate to the Junon region to seek out mates. They build their nests far from civilization and raise their young in pairs. In terms of duties, it often falls to the males to search for food. Unfortunately, when food is scarce, they may occasionally venture into towns and cities where they have been known to attack humans. As Shinra's activities continue to disrupt the ecosystem, such attacks will only grow more frequent. On that note... That's cool. So you have your own little, like, lore AI device who, like, tells you more about the game and the world? Called Mai? M-A-I? Probably an acronym for some, like, you know, big brain... I'll show you what I can do. AI technology name thing. I don't know. Oh, that's cool. You get little challenges. I'm sorry. You guys can see it on the top left. But, um... Look at that. Defeat all nearby enemies. World intel. Staggered enemy. Defeat enemies within a time limit. That's so awesome, man. Oh, I love that. I love that so much. From what I'm getting from the details I've heard about this game, and from the gameplay I've seen of it so far, there's so much to do besides just hacking and slashing through enemies, or like mini games, or challenges. Then there's the main story, there's bosses, optional bosses, apparently dungeons. You know, the irony of it all, and I'm, I'm sure I'll reiterate this later on when we see more, but uh, again, I love Final Fantasy 16 as much as the next guy. The irony, though, is that that game, and again, it's, you can't really compare them to two different teams of Square Enix working on these, but it's worth pointing out the irony. That game seemed to be brimming with life and lore and so much going on in the world, but the actual play area itself felt very empty, but it gave you the illusion that the world wasn't actually lively. However, with Final Fantasy VII, even though inherently the world is meant to be dead and lifeless as a result of Shinra's activities, the world feels like it's living and breathing and there's so much going on. And I just find it so interesting, right, that, that irony there and, the, and that it's kind of worth pointing out, you know? This is so cool. I am going to rip, rip my healthy hours of sleep, rip my the entirety of March. We're going to town on this game. Not once, not twice, thrice. <laughs> I'll play this game like many, many times, man. Because uh, we don't do that here. We don't just play FF7 games once. We play them twice. And maybe even thrice, like I said, considering how amazing this looks. Firework Blade. Oh, there's the synergy shit. This is so good. <laughs> Oh my god, that's so cool! They do their, like, victory dances even when you're not in, like, a special Coliseum area, like in Remake. I love that. I love that little addition to this. Because I one thing about Remake I wish we got to see more of were their victory stances outside of the Battle Simulator and Coliseum matches. And I love seeing Red 13's one now too, because in uh, the original he did he did this like little howl pose. He's like howling. 
man. Why, why does this game have to be so good? Look at that little baby chocobo. <laughs> Yep, always gotta pet the ch We are always petting the chocobo. There better be a trophy for that as well. God damn it, Square. If there's no trophy for petting the chocobo, you and I are gonna have words. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> they just put down a fucking newspaper there to sit his, like, swamp ass down on? But yeah, Cloud would have some pretty bad swamp ass after all this fighting. Jesus. have been traveling in the same attire the whole time ever since the city of mako the city of poison obtain a manifestation of the planet's blessing just like looking at i don't even know what to look at <laughs> there's so much <laughs> oh the bluebirds i think i remember those from the og as well right Fiend sighting three, Zemzi breaks. Fiends roam this place. Rare Zemzalet variant identified. Soul. Commencing guidance protocol. Zemzalets are known as the seeds <clears throat> of the skies, not only because of their intelligence, but also their remarkable feathers that make them both elegant and lethal. These feathers have been prized by all manner of craftsmen since antiquity for their beauty and resilience. Arrows fashioned from them are particularly valuable. They're said to slice through the air so quickly, they're capable of piercing even solid stone. Oh, take care not <laughs> to be so fuck? entranced by their ability. <laughs> little adorable chocobo twirl. What's up with that little baby chocobo? He's just following us around. Spellblade? Oh my god. What the shit, dude? Are the colors of, of, of like all the attacks too? Cloud and Aerith have this like really cool pink blade beam attack. What the shit, man? This is so dope. Soothing breeze. So I, I wonder if like you always get these like special intel challenges when fighting enemies uh, who you've not fought before in general, or if you have to like come across specific enemies to get these. So like kind of like the hunts from Final Fantasy 16. Really cool though how there are these little challenges. Again, on the top left you can't see that. You sort of can, but. Got little challenges with fighting these enemies, like for example, these guys. You gotta prevent them from using their soothing breeze ability before they fly. I live for these kind of things in games. Like when I was growing up, I would play a lot of uh, Assassin's Creed. One of my favorite things to do in those games was getting full synchronization in the missions. You know, like in AC2, for example, like finish like the mission without getting sighted, or you know, finish the mission without killing anyone, that kind of stuff. Um, it's always a good time. It's cool to see how this is back and pretty much my favorite game ever. Okay. Too bad. No, I'm for you. How far are we into this? Already half an hour? Dude, time flies. <laughs> time fucking flies. It feels like we've been watching for like five minutes. I just... I am so into what's going on right now that I'm not noticing the passage of time. This is definitely not time pass, as us Indians would call it. Just a little shit out. Get him. This is uh this is a pastime. I definitely feel this is a very enjoyable pastime. Got that from a stand-up comic I was watching not long ago. I forget his name, it was so funny. There's like time pass and pastime. Two very different things. Time passes in an in Indian concept that basically implies massive boredom. And this is definitely this definitely ain't that. This is more so like pastime. It might as well be a hobby. I'm enjoying this hobby a lot, watching rebirth of demo stuff. <laughs> Ooh, nice! What a legend! He actually finished it within the last nine seconds. So sick, man. Oh shit, that's cool. Was T 
Tifa's idle pose there, like her holding her arm, like in the render? I think so. That's cool. Like the character's idle poses when you're traveling is them like kind of holding onto their arm. So yeah, they're against the same background again. In the menu. Is this supposed to be like the Temple of the Ancients or something? Clearly some important area. Like we see this before also in the Sephiroth flashback. Guys, let me know in the comments because I can't quite put my finger on what that location is that they're standing in front of in the uh, inventory menu. But I love it though. Here's our whole gang, man. Looking better than ever. Chocobo gear? What is that? Oh, you can customize your like uh, saddles and stuff, right? I think we saw a bit of that too with the stables earlier. Got items and stuff. Here's what's weird though, as much as I like this main menu in this game, I can't say it's better than re remakes. It's as good, don't get me wrong. Both Remake and Rebirth did beautiful main menus. Remake had a lovely, simplistic menu design with the character renders, and this one is like... You're not really... You see the characters, but it's not like, a, like static images of them. They're more like dynamic, and they're just standing in front of this interesting level. Two of very different approaches, but very effective. But I wouldn't say one's necessarily better than the other. And here we go. I saw a small snippet of this on a Maximilian Dude stream. And then I clicked off immediately because I didn't want to see more because of spoilers. I thought we would be getting a demo potentially sometime soon after that. Um, but this part looks amazing. Like them running uh underneath uh, Junin Cannon. They're basically in the town under Junin. I think it's just called that in the original too, right? Under Junin. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> as soon as I said that, let's go. Oh, the music. One moment. Welcome to Under Junon, our sunless oasis. My name is Rhonda. I'm the mayor and sheriff. Ah, she in the OG? Lives. I can't remember. I want to say no. I know Priscilla was. I wonder if she's still in this. And if we have the CPR minigame and the dolphin shit, oh my god, I, I gotta know. I gotta know. Only a hundred thousand each, damn. That's not generous enough. What? Avalanche, huh? That depends on who's asking. A woman who could turn you in. And be a hundred grand richer for it. <laughs> well, you know what they say. Can't take it with you. <laughs> hmm. And Aerith to boot, huh? That's another half a million on top. <laughs> half a million? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, last living member of a near extinct race of special people. Die. Consider our lips sealed. <laughs> Sorry, but I call bullshit. Well, oh yeah, there's a cousin. Would, if you knew even half of what my town's been through. Can't wait to hear like Sid's it? vernacular. Leave. But over there, there's a quiet little inn where everyone's welcome. I love under June and this. It's the shithole I remember and love. <laughs> it still looks like the shittiest shithole. That I that I adore, that we all adore. <laughs> Behave yourselves now. Lovely. Everyone says that remaking Final Fantasy help! VII is an impossible task. Oh my God! Please help! Okay, Priscilla's here. Now. There's a monster attacking <laughs> Holy shit! There's so much going on here. Wow. Down here. So many people. So this is just like the OG. We go and help her fight the big freaking water serpent flying thing. I forget what it's called. <laughs> but I gotta know if there's a dolphin. I know I saw a bit of this part. We see Yuffie now. And I think this is where we meet. Yeah, this is where we meet Yuffie, which is kind of sick. Very cool way of introducing her to the group. This is 
is awesome. So I saw literally just a bit of this and then I clicked off. I haven't seen this full scene. So she's being chased by the monster and we gotta go help her. There's gonna be a giant battle. I can't wait. It's so creative how they put Yuffie here. Because it's close to where you meet her anyway at the, in the original if you get her optionally. In the forest. Oh my god. <laughs> That's adorable. What the fuck? <laughs> So the dolphin is in this. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> oh my god, that's so sick, man. And I take it we're gonna have to use the dolphin just like in the original. We'll hop up to the to Junin. That's still there. Let's go. Foreshadowing, baby. Hey, Shinra's most wanted. Get rid of that thing. Damn, if he got messed up. All right, shoot a rocket at his face. <laughs> Come on. I fucking love the design of this boss in this game. Like the way they redesigned all the OG bosses. <sighs> so beautiful, man. How do they keep getting everything so right? How? I mean, shit, I don't want to jinx it, but Jesus. The Terror of the Deep. Was that what it was called in the OG? I don't remember. You guys gotta let me know in the comments. I forget the name of this boss. And I think the reason I don't remember it is because they're so busy trying to not get absolutely fucked up by this boss, like, the first time you play the game. I remember he has a certain attack where it's like, he'll put one of your characters in a bubble and, like, their health will keep going down gradually. And so you're like, oh shit, I gotta focus on the health right now. And so you don't focus on his name. I like the subtle color shift, too, in the UI design, like for the HUD. Uh, like the bottom left, for example, when you're getting commands and stuff, it's more like grayish instead of like pure blue, like in the remake. Little tiny things. Watch the water. Oh shit, okay, there's the watery water attacks. One thing I fucking love about the remake continuity so far, by the way, is that in these boss fights, there are a bunch of cutscenes that are interspersed, and they're cinematic AF and look so dope. Like, remember the one with Sephiroth and, and Cloud when they were fighting the Materia Keeper? God damn. I cannot wait to see the beginning of that flashback where the truck breaks down and they fight the dragon. That better be there. I mean, I'm sure it will be. Considering they got a fucking... They kept the dolphin! <laughs> they kept the dolphin! my help, do you? Need my help, dude. That's straight from Remake. That's cool. We got this. Mad Dash. Is that something he... I think that's an ability that he had in Remake as well, right? Got a whole of also, yeah, for those of you wondering, if you get to keep the weapons and materia and everything from Remake, if you play that before, uh, you don't. But there are certain things you do get to keep, I believe. Like... Uh, if you get the special edition of the game, or no, if you own the game, uh, if you own Remake, you get to keep Rama Summon. I remember that. I don't remember what else, though. Rama was sick. He was hard as shit, though, in that one uh, hard mode fight, or the super secret bosses fight, or whatever, with Yuffie and Sonin. Jesus. Getting nightmare flashbacks to that. Can't wait for those nightmarish fights in this. Like, what is the wise fight gonna be? The it's equivalent to the wise fight? Yes, Definitely won't be in a DLC because I know they said that they don't have any DLC plans for this, which I like. That means it can go full speed into part three after this. Which I think, and I stand by this for now, I think it's gonna be called Return. Final Fantasy VII Return, like you know, the return of our characters at their at their highest. You know, they're going to work towards being back at a high and, and saving the world, because I think that this is going to have a pretty dour ending. A lot of a lot of people in the community think that. Um, and I think Max Dude uh, definitely credit there. 
uh, shout out. I think he popularized that idea, right? And I really like that idea. The characters being at their lowest at the end of this game. Fighting is Red 13. More tutorial stuff. Oh my god, now we're actually like running around as them. I'll see we as as though we're playing. <laughs> one day, one day, guys. Just gotta survive like what, what like 200 days until February 29. Savage assault. Okay, that's so fast synergy attack. It looks like takes up two notches. Bet that hurt. I bet it did. Ascension, ascend, cloud. I remember ascension. Did a lot? That did a lot. Oh no, you don't. Is he gonna jump with a dolphin? <laughs> that, dude, please. Game of the year. Game of the year, I knew it. <laughs> Let's go. Cloud hops on the dolphin, like in the original, but for an even cooler reason than just trying to get to the top of Junin. This demo looks absolutely wonderful. Um, and that's the end of it. <laughs> We're already at the end, man. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, yeah, wow. And here's the crazy thing. There's so much more stuff you can do around uh, these parts next to Under Junin. Um, I saw some other snippets of gameplay too. Uh, not to the extent that I saw this one with you guys just now, but you can swim around. You can go to like these tiny little like islands and stuff or not not islands but little pieces of land kind of interspersed around these ponds and bodies of water so you got treasures and stuff like that so there is so much going on in this game that you can do and i can't wait to get my hands on it so far the combat looks nuts the synergy stuff is a big thing that looks insane we know what the notches are for now every time you do a synergy thing it takes up some notches the thing that we all kind of theorized was going to be in the game definitely isn't. Um, so that's the PHS stuff, right? I don't think that's going to be in the game. I think we were all kind of like speculating that whatever characters you don't have fighting with you, you can sort of like tag them in. But uh, yeah, it looks unlikely. But I am more than happy with what we have here, right? The, the combat looks great. The Chocobo stuff looks great. The story stuff looks great, especially, again, the icing on the cake for me is the stuff with Cloud and Sephiroth at the start, it's man. Like... But... This scene is perfection. It's perfect. The one scene I dreamt of growing so yeah, up this is the first seeing in a remake. The All right, thank you, Games Riot. This is amazing. Thank you for this footage. Again, big shout out to this channel. Um, I appreciate how there was no commentary so we could like really fully get immersed into this. Uh, big like there. Anywho, guys. All right. Next up, what we're going to do is we're going to go straight into the TGS stuff. If you thought this is where the video was ending today, you're stuck with me for a little longer. Guess again. <laughs> so we made it to about 56 minutes into this. And uh, next up, I am really excited to check out the VOD of the TGS live stream with you guys, uh, which is going to be insanely, insanely exciting because that is just more pure gameplay since the moment I believe you walk out of calm in the original Final Fantasy VII um, and in the beginning of the first Rebirth trailer that we saw. And it's going to give us a nice meaty look at what the world is going to look like and how we will largely be interfacing with it. All right, lads. So now we're going to go ahead and check out the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth panel at Tokyo Game Show 2023. Again, this is the VOD version. Uh, this was streamed last night, I believe, like 16 hours ago. And uh, we're sitting down and we're going to watch uh, the part where they go over the gameplay. As you can see, I skipped over to the 28 minute mark. I was watching a tiny bit of this just now. Uh, but it turns out it's just uh, the developers, the, the crew, kind of recapping the events of Final Fantasy VII Remake. Uh, I'm taking a closer look at the trailer uh, for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, the release date one that we got uh, a week or so ago, and commentating over what happened there. Just providing their thoughts and saying a lot of things that we already kind of knew. Uh, and so now I'm jumping ahead to what seems to be the start of all the new gameplay stuff. So we've got Hamaguchi here, Katase, Nomura, uh, all of them. Uh, talking about what we can expect, and I can't be more excited to check this stuff out with you guys. So here we go. We're going to check out what Hamaguchi has to say and then dive straight into uh, all this upcoming gameplay. This is really exciting. We're about to see the open world, how we're going to interface with it. 
all that kind of good jazz uh, from the point that we leave come, I believe. All right, let's do this. But before I start, there is one thing about to say is that this time around, I'm going to uh, show you the content of the game in a very compact, so it's a, just a, a special version from the original, so it's slightly different from the original, and currently it is still in the process of production, so it might be that of course. it's not in perfection in some parts, but yeah, subject to change before the release. So now we'd like to switch the screen to the video. Let's go. All right, so these are the gates from where you leave calm. So from here, so we start from here, right? Yeah. So we just open the door. So this is the grass runland area. So Cloud have fled from Midgar and are going to the south of Midgar in the grassland area. And it's they've staying in a town in a place called Calm. Mm -hmm. But Shinra have heard that the Volanche are staying there, so are attacked Beautiful. and are escaping from Calm, which is here. Beautiful. Beautiful. This guy I was talking to about this trailer tracks him. He had it right. Shinra was tracing them. That was awesome. He called it. The world map characterizes is how we've showed. And in the previous promotion, big shout out to Traxon. This was that meaning. So this is the field. Wow. Wow. This is a field. Is this the field? What's this? <laughs> I love the translator and how she tries to like make them sound exciting in the translation. We have it as one space, and within that, we have this grass land area and other areas. And within that area, there's towns as well as dungeons that are in a seamless as a big world map. Yeah, that's amazing. So it's like an open world. Exactly so what I was saying earlier. Flexible, free world. So you're able to go through the lands which are connected. Whoa, that's new. You're able to we didn't see this in the Summer Game Fest trailer. The Final Fantasy Rebirth world. So if you actually live in this world, this is the kind of distance you have. So in this grassland area, it's only a part of this world uh, area, and it's just a two-kilometer area. So even if you explore this, it won't end. It's crazy. Yeah, so it's just one slice of the large world map, like the OG. I was wondering how you. And I saw a screenshot of the map. It's nuts. We made it. Wait, that making the June and one. The fans waiting for the remake will not be satisfied, so we made this happen. Fantastic. These areas. You have the all the areas surrounding all the planet that is so beyond description. You'd like to go everywhere. Now they are ready to start. Here we go. This title you can go playing. places of the world map as well as change party members as you'd like. This time I like to show you. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's so dope. You have loadouts for the characters. Characters. Pain. You, you don't have to use PHS. Oh my god, there's the map. PHS is not necessary. <laughs> Let's go. You can use them. Like I said, I saw a small screenshot of the Junin area, but my god, this is like after you leave Calm, the main starting continent. Where we'd like to take a look. Area. There will be encounters with enemies. Yes. And in terms of the distance, about one kilometers or so, you will be walking in that direction. Oh, uh, they're playing the FF7 theme walking quietly in the background. And in front of you, you can see some enemies in front of you, so we'd like to explain battle system. Oh my god, the little the grass guy! System, we have a synergy. What's he called again? System. There's a synergy ability and synergy skill. First, I'd like to use with a synergy skill. Crowd is utilizing the power from the Aerith, and Tifa uses the power from the magical power from the Aerith and try to. That's fucking sick. What the hell? In the air. Tifa looks so fun. Attack or combination She's my favorite character to play in Remake, and now they're making her look even more fun to play. <laughs> There's a dream come true to me. So you can use this while ATP gaze is filling up. Oh, that's sick. This is something different from the first title you can see. More token Aerith Tifa synergy you looks so do dope. Have to wander around while the ATB gauge fills up. Yes, you can use combination attacks. And the synergy skill, crowd the combination. And 
every different combination was shown, but we have a every combination of every party member who has so synergy skills. So please, um, oh, that stream looks so good. And synergy skills. The mountains in the distance, it's so sick. Items on the field. Yes, there are so many items on the field, and I love some it. of you have played this on a trial. But there's a crafting or item transmutation system is adopted, and you can pick some dropped items from the enemies and gather various items. Item craft. Craft or transmute various items. What? You can use a potion. By doing so, you can create various items, and when you become more mature, a defense gear or armor equipment, or you can reinstate your gears. As dope. Can be used from the start to the end of the game. Please use this item transmutation or crafting function. Oh. <laughs> it's something we saw in the previous titles at the time of Final Fantasy V or so. Many people love this kind of thing. That's true. Please pick everything on the field. And then I'd like ask, to ask you to explore in the field. So there's oh, so I will, sir. You bet areas. your ass I will. Cloud's gonna roll. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> He's gonna jump for all. That's so sick. Climb up to the hill. I love the verticality in this world. So many field actions. Love to see it. This title. Oh, you can move very freely compared to the previous title. This ball. Flexibility in movement. Yeah. You know, so Rabbits. You can see some animals walking around. Wildlife. And Friendly also, wildlife. Love this Shinra boxes. You can identify Shinra Oh yeah. It's also everybody satisfying slashing through them in remake. Boxes, so please slash them off. <laughs> it will do. Down with the Shinra corp. In addition to that, as you are walking, there's a very small chocobo. Oh, so the... you can follow. I get it now from the demo. They yeah. lead you to the he fast travel points. And we can see some signposts. That's cool. I didn't clue into and that in the demo. When you fix this signpost at the game, you can use this as a fast travel point. Sick. And from the world perspective, this chocobo will be very delighted to see. So cute. I gotta pause it right here. Oh my god. I love this so much, you guys. There's this new trend that's been happening in most open world games or games that are very open to a degree where they don't tell you on the map where the fast travel zones are. You got to find them yourself using the clues uh, with the design of the open world um, or the map design, right? And once you get to those, so kind of like with Elden Ring, for example, uh, you don't actually know where the sites of grace are until you kind of look at the clues on the map uh, as to where they might be, right? With maybe the current ones you've discovered, like giving you a little direction, like a sort of like aura that tells you where to go for the next one. Uh, or when you like really zoom in and you see little etchings in certain locations with some, you know, obelisks that tell you that there might be a, uh, or no, those are for the maps, but any who's. You always have to look for clues as to where you can find fast travel zones. And I love the way they handle it in Rebirth, right? With how you have to like follow a chocobo. You kind of notice uh, who's like conspicuous, a cute little adorable baby chocobo who like leads you towards the fast travel point, And then you set it up. It's great. I'm loving it so far. This is what I love to see. And after fixing signpost, you can create trust with this chocobo. Trust. And you can give some reaction to this. Oh, yeah, just pet the chocobo. So cute. And depending on the area, Best the reaction thing in the game. may vary. So please try it. Wait, what reactions may vary? Chocobo. So cute. And depending on the area, the reactions may vary. Oh, okay, cool. Vary. I thought he was going to say the party so members try. react to that. <laughs> and you can use this as a fast travel point, as well as these bench benches. Oh, fantastic benches. But this is different. Oh? <laughs> oh, he's using cushion. Are they laughing about his swamp yeah, ass too? The wild map, so the bench <laughs> is uh, so old and dirty, so you need to use cushions. Or Cloud is old I and think dirty. Cloud would like to use cushions when he'd like to sit on the bench. He's showing mercy to the bench. So, you recap your life. Point then, we'd like to show you Red 13 and give you some explanation of Red 13. Red yes, give it to me. These enemies look fun to fight. The near range attackers, you can a, show various special moves. Well, he's fast. Enemies, and you can charge your ATV. <laughs> Holy shit. A, <laughs> fucking Lion King out here. A very powerful ATV. 
I'm going to use this. This is very powerful. Whoa! This is very um useful move. Samus what the hell was that? Red thirteen has another special one a, that is the vengeance gauge. When you protect or guard the attacks of enemies, you can a charge a vengeance a gauge. And when you have feel that, you can go into the vengeance mode with the special abilities you can use in that state. It's not that Red thirteen can just go Whoa. Um, into holy the shit. Path. He has so much so range. You can guard the attacks from enemies, then you can use very special. Mode and he's so Red fast. 13, and you can do counter and that's very refreshing. So you attack, charge up a vengeance gauge, and get abilities Red underneath vengeance. That's so dope. Enjoy Can't wait to play him. Using Red 13. Can't wait to play him and also see Cat Chi or Kate Sith. Like pick your poison. Play this character which we could not use in the previous Swimming. Battle, and I knew it. Were about that. So cool how you can swim. Finally. Damn, Aerith looks like she's gonna fucking sink. And you can swim <laughs> with that dress. Uh, you can swim in the river or in the ocean. Maybe. Legendary. Um. The submarine material. Not just swimming, you can climb up roads, or you can use wire hooks. There are so many various world actions. So that I love it. Enjoy exploring the various places. The, of the traversal world. looks nuts. And you have 260 meters to the destination. The field is so big. <laughs> it is. And this time, as I mentioned earlier, this is this is something you can see. Cloud would like to rent Chocobo Chocobo Billy's Ranch to the swamplands. Swamplands. Let's go. So I think you we can made it. tell when you play the original version. You can see. So we are going to Chocobo Ranch. <laughs> I love this. Ranch, <laughs> so that we can go to the swamp lands. Oh yeah, this gets me Everybody emotional, man. The way the Chocobo Ranch. And it's so seamless. It's a perfect remake. Chocobo Bill. I, I will ignore him. <laughs> Vaulting time. over the fence. <laughs> but you can meet him here. Yes, just to show a glimpse of him. Chocobo Bill! Billy, what's up? And we here would like to rent he looks Chocobo cool. so that we can go to Swamp Lands. And in this title, Chocobo offers the various characteristics. Some Chocobos can climb up the hill, or some Chocobo can fly in the sky, or some they go over. I gotta know the music! See, in, at a very high speed. And you can use a Chocobo to go various places. That is one of the. Are they playing the OG Ranch the theme? And this Billy, Chocobo Billy. When you played the last title, you should remember a Chocobo Sum, but yeah. there are people. The cowboy dude. <laughs> owning Chocobo or farming Chocobo is something we try to be detailed about in this title. And this Chocobo Billy is very important character in this title. I huh. see. I like that. Yeah, they're adding importance to all the minor characters on the side, like in Remake. Again. And now we are now trying to so dope. the Chocobo, but we were asked to catch a Chocobo who went away from the ranch. Now we are going to catch a Chocobo. Hey, we're going to need him to cross the marsh. I got to see that gameplay, please. Do you remember how we catch Chocobo? I think this was the greens and other monsters and we should kill monsters at the Chocobo, right? Yes, that is correct. Yes, that reminded me. Yes. Good memory. And in this title, how we are going to get Chocobo is something I'd like to show you and explain to you from now. Thank you. <laughs> and she's Kuloe's sister. Uh, There's a sister in this? Billy. There's just like another dude in the uh, OG, right? It's like another dude and his like his dad. Now, in the in the end. Catching Chocobo, Chocobo Billy will tell you how to ride on the Chocobo. Now we are going. They're to not the inn, but their house, the farmhouse. In this title, as with the original version, you should if he's still there? follow track and footprints. That is the homage we've made. I remember that. Yes, in the original version, that was some symbolic. But in this title, you can see the actual footprints here. It's so real, and you should follow and track these these footprints. Uh, cool. 
wall. In the original version, we couldn't make it, but this is actually what's happening in the title. You follow Chocobo footprints? The Chocobo footprints and you find them manner. and as you walk in the world map you can identify chocobo footprints i'm and you can so curious how you catch them as you can't damage them like in the original right and then you can meet a bunch of chocobo groups are they surrounded by enemies like you gotta kill the enemy oh I noticed tall grass. Yeah, we found Gotta hide. Go and capture chocobo. So how do you think that we're going to capture chocobo I get it. in this one? Hide in the tall grass. Using a net. Get up top. Using sneak up, net, up, right? up top. So let's actually try out. So how are we going Nail to it. capture chocobo in this one? It's a stylus mini game for capturing the chocobo. I wonder if greens are in the game. Do they matter, like Gayashal greens and stuff? We are very careful so that we don't have ourselves in the sight of chocobo. So this is the first one, so it's very easy. So <laughs> you can roll around. Chocobo not looking at you. So we said that there are chocobo with various capabilities, but it's coming to become more and more difficult. So when it becomes a red chocobo, book is going to be difficult but even oh. if you can try so there's no penalty so i want you to make that's cool a lot of opportunities so you want to move when chocobo's not looking and i love it, it i love metal gear fantasy 7 chocobo, chocobo edition you want to catch this time around it's very careful it's hiding but so depending on their color it's harder to it's to stealth you know good to detect so in those cases very cute very cute but staring at you right so in this case, you want to throw a stone so that oh, you're stone. able to divert the view and capture during those I thought he was going to throw like a green and then like he would so go eat it and you'd like stone, You're able to up. divert the view. So this is the opportunity. So during this opportunity, you go and you <laughs> get on. I love it. And this is like when a cap feels safe when you grab. Chocobo feels a sense and then you can become very That's close cute. with Chocobo and able to use a little music icon because you have this bond, you have this trust relationship, oh, and you can provide the Gizal green. Yes, the greens are still there. If you explore the world map, Gizal green, Gizal green, however you pronounce it, not just riding, but a and the other ones too. Um, parts. And you're able to customize various things, so you're able to customize Adorable. the chocobo and create your own chocobo as you explore the world map. So cute. You feel like this sense of affinity. Red I can hear the chocobo music there. slightly. So I think they might be feeling something. So Chocobo is a bit hungry, so he's going to go back to the branch. So it looks very happy. So he's come back. So as you just saw, the world is fast, which I think we've been conveyed. So going back to Chocobo's branch, going back to where you come. That's sick. You unfog whatever you've explored. But for those places that you've visited before, you can um, register that as a fast track. So very fast action. So I want you to utilize this fast track function. And over there, you see Chocobo already back in the ranch. <laughs> That's yeah, amazing. Back. This time, Chocobo wants to capture you right, and then you go to exploration. But this is the first Chocobo, so it's a tutorial. So this time, we had the Chocobo to come back to the ranch to provide various lecture. So we're going to prepare um, so the green, uh, old green Chocobo Green is saying, please wait. So utilizing this time, we want to showcase some of the elements of the exploration of world map whilst we wait for Chocobo to finish eating. So we're going to go gotcha. out. It's cool how they made it a quest to actually get it. And now like you got to wait and do others. Oh my God. Hey, Chadley, what's up? He's wow. back. <laughs> what? <laughs> this little nerd's back again. Chartley. <laughs> this little Hojo drone. Me? With those cute eyes. What are these dialogue options? It's so cool. I don't remember you. Ch Chartley will sleep. But of course, we remember Oh, Chartley. it's for people who haven't played. That's cool. You, would remember you can be like, who are you? But in the previous, in the combat, um, combat simulator, yeah. 
we provided, and by accomplishing that, it was coming, it came up with something. So Cloud was prompted, so said that, Chadley said, I want to go to the world map. So he's now made his research to world map. <laughs> so Good old Chadley. exploring the world map, and from the knowledge that you've developed, you're able to develop the material. So basically, he's saying that, you know, let's cooperate together. So I think Chadley has a story of his own. So he's cursing the fuck out. Element. Let us go. He gives us cool gameplay. Element to explore the world map. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> More incentive. Shinla, the old Remna wave tower are in the world map that are not utilized, but by utilizing that, Chadley will be able to explore the world map. So, using activating various um, communication towers, able to expand the areas he is able Radio to towers. Saying that let's of course, that's cool. World map. So, it's a, it's a game to explore the world map, and that is his intention, and Cloud also follows on that too. So the Remnant Wave Tower, we're going to initiate that. So he's saying it's very close by, over there. So you climb to the top and unfog a bit of the map? So it's traditional open roll element. So close. So the kind of like Far Cry or something. But the first, he's saying, let's do it together. Is so the grapple rope? I forgot about that. Activate the first one. So like this, so Chadley is in the world map, so we've given him a new a uniform, like a Boy Scout um, costume. Yeah, he looks, I was going to say, he looks a tad so bit different, you right? see, under the Remna Wave Tower, there's the activation um, terminal. So this is the, by putting in the module that was recently... Oh, never mind, that's a module. I thought it was a rope gun, like in Remake. So we've been very careful... With like climbing up top. There with my brain. So this is, has the fantasy elements and the light elements, which is the final fantasy seven. Wow. Yeah, it's really good for the colors. Heart, I suppose. So by activating the Remnant Wave That's Tower, dope. the world map close to the Remnant Wave Tower, you're able to detect and chatly. Yeah, it's on fog, the area map. Where they want to explore or investigate. So oh, like wait a minute. This. So Chadley's um, Oh my god. Wait. Investigating. And then Okay, never mind. It's just what I thought. It's just more on the area maps the area map stuff Chadley that shows up. Yeah, like Far Cry. You to investigate will appear. For a second I thought it was like um something what is it what did that remind me of for a split second? Kind of like uh the new Zelda games like Breath of the Wild and TOTK. You can fog a bit of the area and then you can like kind of scout around right at the top of the tower to like know where you want to go next or there's a different game, too, where, like, you can kind of zoom in with this tower. You guys got to, like, maybe remind me what that game is that I'm think thinking of. Where when you kind of, like, look around at the camera at the top of the tower, uh, you can... The, the, the HUD updates with, like, little icons of what's in the surrounding area. Hmm. Death Stranding, right? Uh, when you set up the watchtowers, this, this is why it excited me for a second. That's my third favorite game ever. In Death Stranding, you have a camera that can, like pan around and look at icons and stuff around you but anyways i don't want to digress too much it's not in this game i thought it was for a second and i got really excited but this is all right too and but when it showed the chadley camera view i was like damn we can control that you're able to develop various materia which is the objective cloud and chadley yeah it's just like the last game you do more shit for him he gives you more shit no wave and we've done some analysis so let us um develop one materia so let us um develop a materia so you're able to Huster develop sword looks amazing materia, as always but from where you want to develop the user is able to choose so there's various things so you're able to develop and select the one that she want to use like this so there are various materials What's that one? Come Fire? so there are very convenient material <laughs> oh very interesting cool Noda-san loves material I love material it's a little thing near him 
It's got a little, a little so Wally bot. In his request, there were a couple, so let us try one. So it's around 800 meters difference. So from Kam to Chocobo Ranch, it was one kilometer, so I think it's roughly the same distance. But now Chocobo is ready. There's so much traversal in this. Chocobo and see how convenient Chocobo is. Okay, we're going to ride and Chocobo and go to the place, go to our destination. That one, that Pico, right? Pico is ready. Pico? <laughs> so we're so going cute. to whistle. Hey, oh, you got the whole gang on Chocobos. Come. So Red 13 too. Yep, so that's, that's goofiest, 13, most right? adorable thing. Red 13 riding a Chocobo. They're riding. Red 13's riding. Wow. <laughs> I knew they would like go ape shit over that. Sometimes Chocobo realizes, detects something. So from the smell, if you smell, you're, the, the wild rabbit has the tendency of digging or putting something on the ground. That's cool. So you can track scents and stuff. You saw like the HUD for that in the SGF trailer. So Chocobo. Scent and scour. You don't want to capture a wild rabbit. So What the cute. fuck? Is that a Mog house? In the open world? That's the Moogle house. Moogle house. Did you realize? It's Moogle house. I love gold salsa, so I don't have time, so we have to skip here. <laughs> they I have Moogles in the actual right? open world in this? So as we proceed, That's so sick. Quick. We need to know more. Time, Stop what, where you're going. Stop what you're doing. Go back to the Mog house. <laughs> we'll be conducting, but normally they are various, like mini games. You're telling me they're legit Moogles? to analyze. In the world of FF7, not just in a video game? Not just in a video game in the Gold Saucer, they're real Moogles? Chocobo is very helpful. It's so quick. And you can okay, then. <laughs> That's fucking awesome. A guide system will give you an explanation on each monster's enemies. You can see the explanation of the monster. Why the monster lives in this place. Oh, shit. I think I saw a screenshot of this guy. That's cool. Live in this area. It's like explanation at the zoo. So it's like audio guide. Yeah, the my and thing we saw in the demo. Key tips for combat. The world map content on of Chatterley is not something that you let players to grow and increase levels, but rather we wanted to create some. Oh, uh, okay, I get it now. I'm just gonna pause real quick because I kind of understand. So when you we were watching the demo earlier, if the characters were on Junin and they were fighting these beasts that gave them challenges highlighted in yellow, so right now you can not you guys can't see that again because my face cam's covering it. Uh, those challenges were for the Chadley fights, where you fight them, then go to Chadley and he develops new material. Yeah, I get it now. That's kind of sick. A story behind all of the elements in the world. It's not that you are just fighting and defeating enemies, but I'd like to you to know. At least I think that's what's happening, right? It's, it's only for the Chadley ones. Something we created in this content, and then you can come up them. So oh like shit! What was that block there? You can't do that in remake. Perfect blocking. Environment, and here you can see very strong monsters. And a trial play, you can battle with this monster, but you should be well so prepared, sick. or you'll be killed, uh, beaten by these monsters. It's, they are so strong and powerful. Yep. They don't and look friendly. Yeah, I'd like to talk about synergy ability. Please do. Ability is different from synergy skills. You should charge the gauge and consume the gauge to use the synergy ability. How you can charge the synergy a gauge? When you consume ATB gauge, then you can charge the synergy gauge. So when you use ATB more and more, then you can increase and charge synergy gauge. Jesus. ATB gauge. What is what am I looking at? The synergy ability. And if Aerith, what are you doing there? You're more of it. There's my favorite attack for stagger. Switch character. Focus thrust. Increase the gears. So switching characters with each better battles. That is, is something we'd like to highlight. You should not 
he is just one character, but mm -hmm. we would like to a uh, charge synergy gay switching characters. Yeah. Then you can use move. In the previous title, you just can like just in remake. use cloud only, but in this title, you can use various characters. In in doing so, you can utilize synergy ability. Which Even in the a remake, though, I'd argue that it was important to keep swapping. You can see but I get what he's trying to say. Is charge in his own increase and would like to release the synergy ability they are so strong we see the life point it is on the decrease i think you should cure yourself yes let Excuse us me? cure ourselves be ready and after this attack we'd like to use the synergy ability let's go no <laughs> I'm just loving seeing my favorite ability, Focus Thrust, here. <laughs> yes, okay. Chain ability. Chain it's so cool. Ability. This is a synergy ability, and we are going to use a my god. assault. Savage. My god, man. This game looks so beautiful in the combat. So cool. I know. <laughs> so cool. Yes, this special move, synergy. Wait, I gotta see something. Hold on. Cool. So yep, cool. he, he, he the battle stance. <laughs> Look at so Red 13. Cool. It's so fucking adorable. Yes, this special move, Synergy, is so fantastic. And each character. You guys killed it, I agree. Synergy abilities, so please learn them and use them to the extent possible. There's every combination, every character, right? Yes, that is correct. And, and that's going to be the most exciting part of the game, right? Just experimenting with the various unique character combinations for doing insanely cool tag synergy attacks and seeing how beautiful they are and how powerful they are and there's just so much to the combat here and i just want to say one other thing that i've kind of been vocal about in the past too that i'm really excited for with this game um and it just hit me again uh when i saw baird and tifa here sorry my face cam's covering that they're chilling there is um in the original final fantasy 7 and a lot of old school jrpgs when you were traveling out in an open world uh, and you had to select your party of three characters. That was for, like, the game in general, both the combat and the story. But what's beautiful here is in the remake, obviously we knew this was going to happen, but it's just worth pointing out because I'm really excited for this. Um, choosing your three characters is really only for the, the world traversal and battles. And when you're actually doing the story stuff and watching the cutscenes and seeing the interactions, then you have everyone kind of, like, coming together and congregating to, like, en engage in that stuff. And so the biggest, I would argue, uh, change coming to to Rebirth here, uh, and the thing that we should really be hyped for going forward, is seeing how everyone reacts to every situation from the original game in the story, right? Without having to worry that, oh man, you know, we're going to Gungaga now, where Zack's from, but we don't have Aerith here, how would she react? Like, you don't have to worry about any of that anymore, and I think that is fantastic i can't wait abilities so please Anyways. learn them and use them to the extent possible there's every combination every character right yes that is correct and that is the exploration of the this map is insane man fucking crazy huge for the world intel as it should be and you can see the map is so big so large there is so many unexplored areas <laughs> even he's saying it as soon as i did <laughs> Some of you may What's know, that? you can play a mercenary quest. Mercenary quest, there are so many people in need, you can start quests. When you go to is cities, he... uh, you can start various quests. What is this place? Is this calm? Icons on top of some of the calm. people. They want to calm. You can talk to them and they will some quest to you it looks crazy is the governor of calm there's a <laughs> i'm sorry i need a second and i think they're playing uh ahead on our way again they need to right that was the original that was a first place it plays in the original game right at calm that the theme ahead on our way but in the remake they use it a couple times too but if they don't play that here we're gonna have word square but man i also gotta say calm looks crazy it's it's bustling, dude. Uh, it's funny, though, because I always imagined it would have more of a blue sort of color scheme because of the, the way it's schemed in the original game. But this is cool, too. It's very, like, castle. There's, like, these castle walls and a lot of, like, pointy sort of structures. It has a very rustic feel. Come, but they are in short of Mako from Mako -chan. They are in worry, but I, I will ignore him. And it's massive. I mean, I didn't know what I was expecting. This is calm. Yes, you can see this is calm. 
calm that is so fantastic. You can see so many I know. people living here. And as you are there are the blue buildings. Okay, yeah, there's a blue shit coming in. It's difficult to identify who. <laughs> Look at that! There's so much going on. And in this world, you have very nice functions. You. I don't even believe this. There's some. A, a notice board at the city where people will give notice on quests. So, uh, as you can see, this this is the notice board. When you see notice board, you can see some quests or requests on the board. So from here, you can. Fucking start Witcher quests. Three contract boards. So, so just an example. I'd like to pick this one that is Livestock Bay. This is the quest. You can start a initiating the quest or you can do several tasks in parallel as you move forward in the story. It's not that the tasks would be discontinued. You can just continuously a receive quest as much as many as possible and you can complete tasks as you'd like. I see. Now, in this quest, as time is limited, I'm going to use I, travel. Where I have no words, I man. Visited, but you need to go to that place to use fast travel in the original game. And I, I don't even have any words. The person who's in need and the client. In this quest, maybe we need to dig deep about these characters or they make some requests. Also, please be good side quests. So please. Finishing various quests, please. you can learn many things about this world. Um, in the original, Some of them kind of uh, sucked in Remake and in 16 too, without man. Doing anything, but no, Calm is the first place you go to in this type of This game looks exceptional so far. I hope the side quests are too. Together with Cloud, there's some character playing the major role. In this quest, Red 13 is with Cloud. Huh. So Cloud plus someone from your party will play personally. And by doing so, you can build trust and better relations with Club, and you can imagine how that will play out in the later part. The gold saucer date shit, right? Whoever then, Cloud spends the most time with is probably going to impact who he goes on a date with, I would say. And Cloud was asked to <laughs> look at how Red 13 vaults over. So excited to look into the scene. Red 13 is so in a hurry. He's like <laughs> a dog chasing sheep. Okay, these side quests so might actually have something to them. They might have some sauce, right? They might be good. And when you look into this place, you can see the story will unfold. Like, as long as we're not doing shit where it's like, oh, my, my iPhone's missing, go pick it up from this random location on the map, right? As long as we have less of that and more of anything. Cloud says that we should rely on Chocobo, and Chocobo in this world has a very good sense of smell and better than Red 13. Not just wandering around the world map, but also there are so many quests and you can problem some with Chocobos and Red 13. Um, does not like Chocobo will a overtake his ability, but when you sent on the chocobo then you can track the scent path <laughs> red 13 says well i sh i can track this out the red 13 is is try to compete against chocobo <laughs> that's adorable he's like mopping he's like huh, scent, i probably have a better again, sense so of where this bozo is at i'm better than these chocobos how long you can move they're trying to one up them <laughs> Story. That's great. So Chocobo is very important, not just wandering around the map, but also various quests in the time. See, even little things like that, I just want to pause for a second and, and comment on this, but having small things like that dramatically improves the quality of a side quest as well, right? Even if the content is as bland as like, oh, go fetch me my water bucket, right? Depending on what happens between the characters in something as bland as that, the side quest could potentially go from being like the most mundane boring thing ever to being something memorable and like really engaging and exciting a great example like final fantasy 16 briefly tapped into that right in a game where otherwise for, mo for the most part the side quests weren't great uh was when you were like you meet that little psycho girl that you did not see coming from a mile away right like you thought that you were gonna go help this little girl out but 
she turned out to be absolutely apeshit insane and all the quest was about was yeah like finding a dog and helping a girl find her dog but what you actually end up seeing there is nuts when it comes to the character department right so as long as we have little things like that which this game seems to kind of be doling out right small moments between the characters like entertaining moments for example with red 13 trying to one-up chocobos right and just our beloved cast here doing things that you know are just so um entertaining and and you know allow their personality to shine through even in in some of the like smaller less memorable parts of the game like the side quests right that could make the biggest difference and uh i i just really hope that this kind of energy permeates the whole thing and this is how it works regardless of whatever the objective is it's so fantastic and from i'm loving everything so far man play by yourself so this is something i can show you it was so quick well we're still in what else we got 15 minutes yeah man so it's already been an hour story. there are so many things we are to i know. mean technically 30 minutes since we started it in the middle the swamp lands. I'm so intrigued, and not just Chocobo, there's so many bowling contents. This is the first area, this is the, Show me more. Just the first city, but so many things Show me. that we learn here. So many contents, till the end of the title, right? That is correct. So fantastic. And the battle system, combat system, it looks so exciting. Yes, it is well crafted. And also in the trial play, many people touch on that. And we received very good feedback and I'm very delighted. Yes, we'd like to consider how, what would be the best approach to move in the battle. Not just combat in battle, but also chocobos. Not just uh, vehicles, but it's like they are party member in a way. Yes, and they are so cute. Most important thing. The field, but even up to here, we've had a lot of volume. So, Hamakuchi-san, there is something that you still want to show. So, today, at, on this TGS stage, we wanted to showcase the video or the title but normally if i plan that it would take two hours just for my part no so, but the product director said that you can't have all of the tgs of no course, that's no surprise come on but, so this time around i kind of um, shrank it into a half an hour so the acceptable <laughs> of the game i've only been able to explain that but there are the fluent variety of the games which i was not able to explain showcase today understandable so i would like to have this opportunity because you're all here to cut some part and a lot of people are participating online too so today we would like to share some new information so like i was gonna say i like what they've shown so far right the volume of information that's been coming out i'm happy with it right it's not too spoilery and it's enough to get us excited uh to want to experience the whole thing right and i hope that going forward up until the release of the game they don't show too much right if they stopped here and showed us nothing for like the next five months i would be 100 percent okay uh, because I think this is the perfect amount they've shown so far. Therefore, there are various informations, and it's information only for Grassland. Not everything, but I'm so glad I came here today. So I've kind of made that into two to three min minutes um, video, so I would like to show this for the first time. All right, got a little more. What a legend. So, you're able to make... Bog house! Please feel to make... So, this is the Mughal house. Oh, my God. So, earlier... So, is this the game at the Gold Saucer? No, it's actually us going to the house in the open world. What is going on? So, it's like a mini game. Volume. This is Max. So Mughal house mini game. And... <laughs> These bombs are back. Them. From Remake. 
What are they doing here? What the fuck is going on? <laughs> are coming to the world map together with a cloud escaping or fleeing from Midgar. So there's various stories. They have various stories. They're kind of being beaten. They're being beaten. I can see that. They're characters that are loved. And in this one... I heard about this. A, card a new card game. Card what game the hell? This game just doesn't end with all the dope-ass content so that it's got coming out. The start till the end, you're able to play during the game. I just showed you just a bit. The Queen's Fury? What's it called again? As I said, you're able... I love how now we can say that all of Final Fantasy 7, 8, and 9 have card games in them, right? That's just so cool to think about, right? 7 was the only one that didn't have have a card game, even though it had like a boatload of mini games, but now it has a proper card game, right? Took us almost 30 years, but here we are. Got Triple Triad, Tetra Master, whatever it was called in FF9, and now the, the Queen something. Able to customize and attach parts. <laughs> What was that card game? Racing? So I'm showing you bits and pieces. Oh, snap. I mean, I know we were going to get this in the gold saucer. But as a tutorial for Chocobo for you to be able to... Oh, is there like time trials? This itself is enjoying. Sick. So the characters we saw earlier will appear on quests. This is so sick. And you're able to see the relationships and the background of these characters. This is where Aerith is the protagonist. So Why we're picking with Aerith? The flower in terms of the quest. How much is there in this game, dog? So in the previous one, we saw this, right? In the previous title, I think they were picking flowers. <laughs> I love it. They can keep going flower picking with Aerith. She never stops being a flower girl, even in outside Midgar. So this is, this one is a very strong one. Yeah, that's so a big looking beast. If you are able to finish a certain condition, it appears. It's a very rare monster. So a piano. The piano. Oh, piano. piano. What the fuck? <laughs> this is so lit. Can it be? So it's now like a different game. So it's now I can't contain game. my hype any longer. Wow, they're playing. It's a rhythm game. A rhythm game? So this. Cloud playing the piano. Not just an Nibelheim flashback, right? That was an Nibelheim flashback. Was it please, please? Oh God, please be something. I mean, it could also just be when they go to Nibelheim in the present, but whatever. Wherever this is, even if it just happens once, like in the original at Nibelheim, it looks sick. <laughs> it looks so cool. And they said the word rhythm game, two words, sign me up. I'm in. Can it be? So it's now like a different game. I know. So it's now a rhythm game. Wow, they're playing. It's a rhythm game. This has to be in Tifa's house, right? It looked like it. Oh, a rhythm game. Piano. Oh, piano. Piano? Very strong one. I don't know. I'm sorry. I need to know. So this, if you are able to finish a certain condition, <laughs> it appears it's a very rare monster. So there's the Make piano. a splash on your vacation. Oh, piano. Dolphin stuff. This has to be Tifa's house. Piano? Be? Whatever, though, I... Can it be? So it's now like a different game. So it's now a rhythm game. This is so wow. cool. They're playing. It's a rhythm game. So He's playing ahead in our way. Songs that he can play? Is that... That's not Wutai, is it? Where is this place? Where is this? Buddy, they said that Wutai is not going to be in this. What, what the... F but it looked like Wutai. So there's more songs that... He can play? That Eastern oh. architecture. Where is this place? Where is this? We got to talk about that. <laughs> oh, I'm so intrigued. That was a dope little slice of intel there. So if you include that, it would have taken two hours, and the director said, I can't present that. So you showed me bits and pieces. This is like, um, I wanted to see many. I'm intrigued by all, but there were mini games. There were card games. What's that? So can you play that everywhere? Yes. Knew it. So there's one Love it. within it, and with the card players, you're able this game to solve is the a mystery and solve, and it comes to a very heartbreaking or heartful end. So how much can you play? 
So if you play a stopping by, you won't go be able to reach the main part. So there's a lot. So rather than doing everything, it should be that you should be selective and do the things that you like. And then once you go through the store, you go back. Or once you clear the games, then you go back. So I'm so happy about the way this game's turning out. And I'm so happy he said that. Like, thank you. These guys are legends. Like, thank you, Hamaguchi, right? For, for mentioning that this is the kind of game where they really are trying to be ambitious and make it as faithful to a Final Fantasy VII fan's dream as possible, right? Where you're not just going on the main story. It's not just about chasing down Sephiroth. It's not just about going from beat to beat to beat. It's about taking in the little things doing the little things, having fun with the little things, all the nooks and crannies, all the tiny details that you would expect from the world of Final Fantasy VII. And it's worth reiterating again, right, how, again, I just can't believe the irony of it, how as much as I love 16, that game, which was brimming with lore, I mean, hell, it had its own Wikipedia system about what was going on in the world, it felt like it was less lively than a world which is meant to be full of you know, lifelessness and death and demise and just, you know, nature barely hanging on, which is Final Fantasy VII. And I'm so glad that despite that, you know, they, they still show that, they still kind of get that across, but also allow us to do so many things and fall in love with this world the same way we did with the original. It's, I think it's really, really wonderful. On the individual. Wonderful. I cannot and wait for this game. Also the piano. The piano. Those who played, I'm sure it's a reminiscence. So you will get the final heaven. You remembered. So I. <sighs> Did they literally just spoil you getting the final heaven by playing Tifa's theme? Or the main theme, of, I can't remember if you got to play Tifa's theme for Final Heaven or the main theme of Final Fantasy VII on the piano to get it. Did they just spoil that? I, I don't mind. That's awesome that like they're telling us it's still there. Tifa's Final Heaven. I'm sure it's a reminiscence. So you will get the Final Heaven. You remembered. So I would like to go and capture the Final Heaven. Wait, 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 wait. And once you go through the straw, you go back, or once you clear the games, then you go back. So I think it's really dependent on the individual. Wonderful. And we also saw the piano. Yep, yep. So you play the piano. I just wanted to make sure. Those who played, I'm sure it's a reminiscence. So you will We're get getting the limit final breaks the heaven. same way. You remembered. So I the final break. Would like to go and capture the final heaven. Yes, sir. Same. Actually, today. Tifa's final I heaven. You a video, but I said it was for the grassland. But some there are different information. So that piano is one in a different area. And the reason why I include that huh. today is because that mini game. I wanted Noda san to you to play today. It's in a different area. You just say it's not so in Tifa's like house? A sound game. It's a hmm. sound game, but that sound game is it has very original in terms of the operability. So to operate the piano, play the piano is difficult, right? So you have to be careful of your right hand, left huh. hand. Yes, of course. So much pressure on me. I wonder if I can do it. Okay, you will. Can I play? All right. We We're playing more. So more piano stuff. Play Best part of the whole game so far. <laughs> wow. So this is the RL, so right hand, left Can hand. Can I have the controller too, please? So we're going to switch to the screen. Oh, so they were saying like it's in multiple locations, not just Tifa's house. Like the one in the This looks so sick, man. the piano with this. So this is really quite real. So you could play like a real piano. So I want you to play the songs that you like and like you to share that. So you can re really become a piano master. So I might be able to play one song, right? Yes. The developer staff was able to play and show that to everybody. I just don't believe this game is that. real. Someone wake me up. There might be a concert out of here. So this time, the, if you press the button in the middle and select the song, she music? So Final Fantasy VII. You see the keys? Whether you're a uh, Aerith camp or Tihat team, the user is able to discuss 
but today I'm going to be nasty, and we have the theme for Aerith and Tifa. So don't make me cry. I want you to don't play Aerith's theme, which please. Cap you are. Not a son. Oh God. Are you Aerith Cap or Tifa Cap? <laughs> I love how they're addressing that here. <laughs> That's funny. These guys are great. Okay. Your team Aerith or Team Tifa? Choose your answer wisely. I'm going to pick Aerith because I have no choice. No pressure. I just so piss off an entire collective part of the fandom. Custed El Sol, let's go. That's my music right there. Let's so go. My boy. As you play. Can I? So there's the countdown. I hear it. Come on, go. It's like a legit sequence. Oh my god. Okay, got it. I want to cry. Okay. Okay, it's so difficult. But you're doing it. You're doing it okay. Okay, got it. I got it. And then the songs come along. Wonderful, lovely. You got it in an instantaneously. Yeah, I got it. It's casually playing the saddest song ever in existence. In the coolest way possible. You're doing well. You're doing well for the first time. It's considering it's your first time. So you're using the analogstick, so not just the right hand side. If you have to use your left hand side, unless you're used, you do come to a panic. And the music, there are various music notes in the world. You're able to find the song and make various challenges. Jesus Christ. <laughs> now close. This is a level three song. <laughs> very Dear God, very man. Well, well done. God. I can't it's even so believe this fine. game. Like, I can play this forever. The way it ended, so see. I think I can. We don't deserve this game. So many mini games in this We don't. It's so great to have this in FF7. Some players will just play this mini game. There will be so many other musical pieces and songs, right? That is correct. And if it's not sufficient, you can just free play the piano. And you can play some original audio here using this piano. Well, uh, I think I'd like to ask a professional piano players to play this. And and when you have played piano, and then you can do a good performance, and it takes some time to get used to it, but pianists um, can play it well. As you get used to it, you can play more difficult pieces. Because you have a solid understanding of the cadence, right? Um, I, I'm looking forward to so many people uploading their piano performance on various media. And I'm their difficulties to it, their skill involved. Is Cloud will play this game. You you like that? Yes, of course. I like that. There's so many drama within the piece. Of this theme. <laughs> That there is. Try not to cry challenge, almost impossible. His performance, Nomurasa, what's your take? Yes, I see so many exciting faces in at the stage. I was mesmerized by the performance. And I'm looking... Okay, and uh, I guess that's about it. Uh, rebirth at TGS. I just gotta sit for a second, man. After that ending, like you guys probably noticed, but 
after I, man, after I saw the piano part with Aerith's theme, I was at a loss for words. I, I couldn't even express how excited I am for this game, how much more excited I am, and just how happy I am with how things are turning out. And I just, uh, God, God damn it. I don't know what to say right now. I have to cut ahead here for a second <laughs> to the end of this video because I have to get up and walk around. You know, when you see something that you're really excited for, uh, at least for me, what happens is like you're so excited. You just got to like walk it off. You know what I mean? So I, I took a good, you know, a good little walk, came back and sat down after collecting my thoughts because as we progressively got through the TGS footage, Right, my excitement went from, my goodness, this is something that I can express how much I'm excited for, to levels of, I cannot believe this game is real, we don't deserve this game, and I'm at a loss for words as to how to express any of that. And now that I'm able to kind of like, effectively end this video, <laughs> you know, I'm back here to just tell you guys that, man, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, Remember how at the start of this long ass video, right? It, I don't know how long we've been going on for here, but remember how at the start I was like, you guys, I'm not exaggerating when I say that this could potentially be one of the greatest games ever made, not just the best Final Fantasy VII game we have ever seen. I guess you now know why. <laughs> I guess now I know why as well, you know? I was only basing the beginning of this video off the very brief snippets of the demo I'd seen with the Mount Nebel and June and stuff, but now that I've seen it all, the TGS stuff, I um I now realize why so many people are are saying that they have shed tears, that they have seen things that really <sighs> reassure them that what we're anticipating is going to be something special. And uh it's just something I can't wait for. These are gonna be a long five months of waiting. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, the, the impossible game, two discs, 100 hours of content, all the moments we love, and then some being recreated with the beautiful, beautiful technical prowess of the modern day and age. What a time to be alive. <laughs> I can't wait for any of this. The synergy stuff, the open world stuff, the, the story stuff, the mini games, the fact that this game is so lively in such a lifeless world, lore-wise, uh... Yeah, I, I, I just don't know what else to say beyond this is something that is beyond my wildest dreams. And, and even in my wildest dreams, where I, I, I was thinking of all of these parts that I would love to see someday in a remake before a remake was even announced in 2015. Like I said earlier, the, the Cloud and Sephiroth stuff, for example, with Mount Nebel. They've knocked it out of the park. They, they made it just the way I wanted, it, wanted to see it for so long. And then even better than that. And this is a game that's going to be truly something else. And I can't wait to experience it with you guys come February 29th. But I just do want to say that, you know what, I'm happy to, to kind of be able to have this platform where I can kind of document my experiences with playing things that make me happy, you know, and, and meeting so many amazing people along the way who kind of share that same infectious joy and passion for the things that I love as well. And it's definitely been my favorite part about streaming and creating content. I love being able to look back at this stuff, look back at what made me happy, and also, you know, like I said, meet so many new amazing faces along the way. And I can't wait to experience this game. But until then, guys, thank you so much for checking out this reaction video of mine. I know it's probably the longest one I have ever made. And I have no doubt that there's going to be even more stuff coming down the line between now and February 29th for promoting this game. But... I feel like I want to say with a fair degree of confidence that the trailers that we saw today, right, or not the trailers, but the TGS demo and, and the regular demo that was available to a select few people that we had a look at today is probably the most hype-inducing stuff that we are going to end up seeing before the game comes out. I have no doubt there are going to be a lot of amazing new trailers down the line that show off even more, uh, but I think this is where we're going to peak, and uh, I, I can't... 
I can't wait. I can't wait for the future. Thanks so much, guys. To anyone who might end up watching this, if you enjoyed this reaction video and made it all the way to the end here, I really do appreciate you. Please consider leaving a like on the video and maybe subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. And uh, definitely follow me over on twitch.tv slash irritableindian, where we are going to be doing our full playthrough of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, inevitably, and where we're playing a bunch of games right now. I stream almost every second day, and uh, I would love to see you guys there. Say hello and uh, have you join me along for this dream ride that uh, has been a blast for the past four years. And uh, I can't wait to continue making more amazing memories and experiencing this game that means the world to me in, in February. So I'll see you guys soon. Uh, stay happy, stay healthy, stay positive. And how can we think about ending a Final Fantasy VII related video without the greatest thing there is to say, the greatest outro ever? Embrace your dreams and protect your honor, folks. Keep on keeping on.